With the latest version of Blender literally just coming out, I figured now is the perfect time to drop a tips video for noobs like myself that have been ready to jump in. What up, what up, Wimbush here. And for this video, I actually went out and enlisted some of the top tutorial artists for Blender to come in and give noobs like myself some tips and tricks on how to get started with Blender. And at the end, I'm gonna share some tips that I personally learned along the way as a Cinema 4D artist trying to get into Blender. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna be giving away a loop deck to sponsor in this video to one of you lucky viewers out there that comment down below. And I'm also gonna show you guys how I used a loop deck to help myself learn Blender since it's all shortcut based so without further ado let's jump right into it so first up is my buddy jesse he's been teaching blender here on youtube for a very long time so let's jump right in and see what he has to say hi i'm kaizen tutorials and thanks so much wayne bush for having me on i want to highlight one of the main things that new blender users run into and that is slow rendering speeds so blender runs in two main render engines and which are ev which is the real-time render engine and cycles which is a path tracing or ray tracing render engine i'm going to show you cycles since this is the more common render engine uh, for creating high-end quality renders in blender so let's go over to cycles here and let's set up a few things so you can get speedy renders because by default the render settings are not that great let's start off by going into edits and then go into preferences and let's make sure we are actually using our gpu i know you have a decent pc wimbush so let's go into system here and uh, enable whatever uh, cycles render device you have so in this case if you have an rtx card you can use the optics render engine which is the fastest one and just enable the rtx card uh, don't enable your cpu it will only slow it down and then we go into the render properties so there's a lot of properties in here and we're mainly going to look at the uh, render uh, property here and some of these features down here so in the render properties there's a couple of things first of all we have the noise threshold which is the amount of noise that blender allows in your final render so by default it's set to 0.01 which is a very low value uh, let's render out one sort of benchmark test here Right, so it's been over five minutes. Uh, I've decided to quit out the render because it was taking roughly 20 minutes in the estimate for it to finish, which is a crazy amount of time for this kind of image. So let's set up our cycles just to be a little bit faster, maybe get it down to below one minute for the final render per frame. So like I said, we have the noise threshold here and I'm gonna set it way higher. So I'm gonna set it to 0.1 for now and let's see how that looks. Then we have our light paths here and they are usually quite high for the default scenes here. So I'm just gonna set the total to two, which is the highest level it can be. And I'm just gonna set diffuse to two, glossy to two and the transmission, I'm gonna set to one or yeah, one should be fine. There's not a lot of transmission in this scene. Transparent can stay at eight for now. Um, that'll be fine. And the final thing I wanna do is over here in the performance tab, I'm gonna enable persistent data, which will make sure that your render is just that little bit faster because it now loads in the data in your scene by default instead of having to load it in per frame. So let's check out how long our render will take now. All right, so that finished up the render. And as you can see, it took one minute and 19 seconds to finish, which is so much faster than the previous one, which took almost 23 minutes to finish. It can really help when doing some of that look dev and you wanna just make some test renders. So it's great to know for beginning Blender users. I hope you have fun learning Blender and I wish you all the best. This next person needs no introduction. You guys, if you do use Blender, you probably already know him. He's Ducky3D and he has some words to say for people just getting started in Blender 3D. All right, two tips for me that helped me when I was first learning Blender. One of them is finding a YouTube channel that I like that I feel like has a good pace for me and then just kind of binging it, watching like 30 of their videos back to back, following them. It's almost like a really good sprint, just going through one video after another after another. And by the end of it, you'll have this database of information that you learn really quickly from because tutorials are like 10, 15 minutes long at best. Another tip is try to find tutorials where you have an end product that you can be proud of rather than learning just a tool, say, let's learn how to make this kind of hard surface mechanism, something simple, but something you can export at the end. It's going to make the learning process of Blender much more rewarding and actually feel like you finish something because you have something to look at. That really helped me when I was learning, make it less just discouraging and took so long. Now this next artist, he's always on the bleeding edge of what's new and happening inside of motion graphics, everything from Blender to Unreal, somebody that I personally know, Brandy Clemens. He has a lot of good tips here for you guys that are ready to get started with Blender 3D, coming from a Cinema 4D background. 
Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements. Jonathan, thank you so much for having me on your YouTube channel. I, I love using Blender. I've used it for about three years now as my main kind of DCC. And there are three uh, cool little quick tips that I want to show you today. Uh, if you hit F3 on the keyboard, you can actually search for any function within the software and you can actually see where it lives. So I'm going to go ahead and add a UV sphere to the scene. And you can also create quick favorites by right clicking on anything in the menu. So for instance, if I wanted to add this uh, statistics to my quick favorites, uh, you can see it's already in my quick favorites, but you can just say add to quick favorites. So then when I'm in object mode, since I right clicked on it and added in object mode, it actually appears in object mode and I can hit show statistics to show all that cool statistics up there. But if I go into edit mode by hitting tab and I hit Q on the keyboard, you can see it's not there because it is context sensitive. So in object mode, sculpting mode, edit mode, pose mode, in any of these modes, you can actually have your own quick favorites, which is super handy. And you don't have a massive list of all these quick favorites, which I think is really cool. The other thing uh, that may or may not be considered a tip is uh, I just wanna show you how to bake animation into objects. So uh, this actually helped me this week. Uh, if you go ahead and turn on auto key, and just kind of move the cube a little bit. I'm gonna do a stupid little animation here and just move this up and over. And let's say I wanted to parent the uh, sphere to that cube. I can do that by hitting Control P and say Keep Transform. And then you can see that the sphere lives underneath of the cube. Uh, but what if I wanted to bake the animation onto the sphere and not have it as a child? Uh, you could actually just go ahead and grab that and come up to Object animation and you can do bake action here and I'm gonna go ahead and just select all of the options here and just hit OK and you can see that the sphere is now not a child of the cube and uh, it has its own animation now so I can get rid of the cube and you can see that the sphere has the animation so I hope that helps everyone thanks so much Jonathan and I'll see you guys later Last but not least, we have Black Mixture. You probably know him here on YouTube. He's often showcasing a lot of really dope artists that are used on Blender and other applications, along with doing tutorials himself. So here's some tips and tricks from Black Mixture. What's up everybody? It's your boy Nate from Black Mixture. I'm excited to be on here for Windbush's top tips in Blender. So here's a quick tip in Blender that I think you guys absolutely should know. If you ever wondered how to create a really nice looking camera shake without spending a whole bunch of time, well, here's a really awesome way that you can do it. All you have to do is add in a camera, set two keyframes, one at the beginning, one at the end for where you want your camera to travel, or if you just want it in place, you can just have two keyframes for it in place right there. Select that camera, press I on your keyboard, and then choose location, rotation, and scale. Next thing that you wanna do is go down over here and click on the graph editor. You're gonna see the keyframes that you just generated, but we wanna go down into this drop down, which is just gonna pull up the X rotation and the Y rotation and the Z rotation. The next thing that you can do is select those keyframes and over in the modifier section, click add new modifier and we wanna select on noise. What this is gonna do is add a bunch of random noise to that graph and this will help simulate a handheld camera shake. Now you can customize this to your liking. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase that scale, change that strength, and all of a sudden I have something that looks pretty nice, super quick and easily. If you guys like this tip, I'm sure you're gonna love the rest of the tips that Winbush has got for you. Anyways, thanks for having me on Winbush. Hope to catch you in the next one. Peace. Now I wanna thank everybody from Jesse to Ducky3D to Brandon and Black Mixture for sharing some tips. Now I wanna jump into my segment where I'm gonna be showing some stuff that caught me up in the beginning and how I was able to overcome them. So if I'm looking at Blender 3.6 that just came out and you see that we have the startup screen right here, the first thing that threw me off is whenever I went to orbit around an object, it actually went in orbit the same way as Cinema 4D. So when you come down here to where it says shortcuts, if you actually click on this, and go to industry compatible you can actually switch this out and it's going to navigate a little bit better for people like myself that are used to using cinema so now if i hold down the alt key and left click i'm actually orbiting around if i hold down the middle mouse button it's actually panning around as well and if you missed that beginning screen you can always come up here to edit come down here to preferences and down here under key map up top here it will usually just say blender and this is what it's going to look like so if you just left click on this 
come down to industry compatible now everything is going to move is as we're used to inside of cinema 4d now when it comes to using blender we all know by now doing shortcuts is the best way to go about navigating around blender and the easy way to do that is using an item like the loop deck because you're able to customize it and all the shortcuts that you want you can actually put it on here but if i look inside the marketplace there's actually a blender profile that will help get you started so this is the application that actually comes with the loop deck. And if you look at my video in the past, maybe a couple of years ago, I actually did a loop deck breakdown on how I made my own profile using Cinema 4D. So I will go back and check that if you want to see how to customize it. But we do have this marketplace up here in the top right hand corner. So if I actually click on this and then we scroll down here a little bit, and just keep scrolling through. And you should see a blender profile right here that's actually made by Keith O'Donnell. So if I left click on this, this is going to tell you it was updated about a year ago, but I did just try it with Blender 3.6 and everything works as it's supposed to. So all you would do is click install here and you would install it. And then if I come back up here, the main profile, you can actually see now we have a profile for Blender. And if I left click on this, now you can see we have a lot of shortcuts using Blender. Now, if I'm actually looking at my loop deck here, you can see if I push the buttons here, it's actually going to change and correlate with all the different shortcuts that they had created on here, which is really neat. So let me actually jump in the blender and let me try some of these out. But before I do that, if I click back here on the profile, you want to make sure that dynamic mode is actually turned off. Now what dynamic mode does is it usually knows what application you're using. So we'll automatically switch it here on the loop deck. But I found with the latest version of 3.6, it wasn't recognizing it. So if you do dynamic mode off and then you manually select it, everything should work as is. So I'm actually going to just take this and drag it over to my second monitor. Now let's take a look at the loop deck in action. So right now I'm inside of Blender again. But the first thing I want to do also is come up here to edit come down here to preference and you want to make sure that your key map is actually set for blender now if you have it on industry standard these shortcuts are not going to work because they're all mapped to the blender interface here so i'm going to exit this out and now let's look at the loop deck so if i'm actually looking here on my screen you can see that we actually have let me actually pull this up a little bit we have a button right here this is camera perspective so if i select this now you can see we're looking through the camera here and it's just that easy so a lot of these shortcuts are already made like i'm going to do toggle sidebar we have our sidebar popping out here let's come back over to edit mode and now you can see we're inside of edit mode here switch modes it's going to bring up all these different options here and this just makes it really easy to come through like i hit display mode you can see now it has all the different displays so you see i clicked on render mode right there let me select maybe wireframe now we're in wireframe mode. So you can see that you actually don't have to learn all these shortcuts if you don't want to, if you have an item like the loop deck. And if I go to the loop decks product page, you can actually scroll down and see that they have a lot of different versions of the loop deck. I'm actually using this one right here. It's one of the more expensive ones. It's the loop deck CT because I do like the knob on there whenever I'm doing stuff on like After Effects or Blackmagic Resolve. But if you scroll up and you want a more affordable options, you could do the same thing here with the Loop Deck Live S. This one is 189 US and then we also have the Loop Deck Live. So I would just go through research because you could do a lot of stuff with the Loop Deck and just find something that works within your budget. And if you stuck around to the end, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. But in order to win this, all you have to do is comment down below in the comment section and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. It's as easy as that. And then maybe in about like three weeks to a month, I'm going to announce the winner by random by somebody to comment down below. So again, big thank you to Loop Deck. This has really helped me out learning Blender. And I hope it's going to help you guys out too, to whoever is the lucky winner. So once again, I want to thank everybody that helped me put together this video. Being a Cinema 4D artist for the past 17 years, it's kind of hard to wrap my head around how Blender works. But the more I use it, the more I enjoy it. So if you're enjoying it, again, make sure you leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until next time, stay fresh keep creating and i catch you guys in the next video good luck to the winner out there i see you soon take care